Hi, and welcome to this Fornav Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to edit our Business Central labels. Labels are an essential part of the Fornav report pack. They are used for shipping, production, warehousing, anything really that requires identifying a product or a package. Since Fornav work, makes working with reports so easy, editing your business central labels with Fornav is very easy as well. Change the layouts, add a barcode, or change the barcode type, it's all possible. To demonstrate how to edit our business central labels, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will add a barcode to the item price tag. In step three, I will discuss the more complex document labels. In the fourth and final step, I will edit the document label. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will edit labels in a Business Central SaaS tenant with the Business Central 2023, 2023 Wave 1 release. I have installed the universal code version of the 4.5 customizable report pack, and I have executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central on-premise environment. I also have the 4.5 designer installed on my PC. The 4.5 designer can be downloaded from the 4.5 website. The document labels are available in the 4.5 customizable report pack version 7.1 and higher. The first thing we will do is to edit the item price tag label. This is one of the simpler labels in Fornav. Let's say we want to remove a logo and add a barcode. So first thing we are going to do is to have a quick look at these, uh, at this item price tag. So we're going to grab one of our items like the Amsterdam lamp. And in here we've created an extra button to start the Fornav price tag, which we can preview and close. And that will give us the basic layout for the uh, uh, for the pri for the price tag, uh, with the item number, the description, uh, the logo, the price, and the company name. Now, in here, let's say I want to add a barcode. Uh, I want to give the name of the product a bit more space, so uh, push the, the Cronus NL down a little bit, um, and generally make it look a bit uh, better according to the specifications that I have. So let's go to my four and a half reports. And if I scroll down in this list, you will find a section with all of the four and a half labels. And in here, you have the more complex document style labels that we'll look at later. Uh, we've got the item price tag, uh, item labels, custom labels, vendor labels. Those are the simpler labels. And they're all, they're all built up pretty much the same way and they're all editable in pretty much the same way. So I'm going to open my item price tag. And I will zoom in a little bit. You will notice right here that we've got our logo, number, description, etc. Now you will notice that this label is smaller than the space that it reserves in the uh, in the printout, and that's because if I look at the report properties back here, you will notice that the page height is set to 400 and the page width is set to 620. Whereas if I look at my body section, that's only 200 high. So I'm going to give my body section a little bit more space. I've got a total of 400 and I've got a, a, a margin at the top of 20 and a margin at the bottom of 10. So let's say I can make this 350 and still have plenty of space on my page. And that gives me a lot more space in my report. So I can push my unit price down, I can push my company name down, and then the description I can make a little bit bigger. I can set my alignment to top left, and I can set multi-line to yes. And if I set multi-line to yes, then my description will get broken off into multiple uh, multiple lines. Also gives me a nice bit of space right here to add a barcode. Let's say I just want to add the item number as a barcode. You can add anything as a barcode, really. Uh, but for now, I want to use the item number. So I'm going to grab the number, hit Control, and drag it into my report. And that will give me 
a question. Do I want to add this as a text box or a picture box or as a barcode? So I'm going to choose, going to choose a barcode. I will give my barcode some space because I'm going to choose a specific barcode style, which is called a data matrix. And a data matrix is a 2D barcode, which means it uh, it is a bit more complex than the standard uh, Stripey codes that we've all used before. So we've used my barcode symbology of data matrix. And then in my barcode, I have some other properties. For instance, the show text, uh, which will show the text underneath the barcode. I don't need that because I've got my barcode already in there. And in my barcode symbology, I can change my compaction mode or matrix size, uh, both of which are fine as it is. Now, whenever you use a barcode inside 4NAV, uh, in some cases, you may need to play with your symbologies, uh, with your properties to make your barcodes fit or make your text fit your barcodes. Um, it depends a little bit on what barcode you have. If you use a QR code, you have a lot of a lot of separate properties. We have a separate video on that, so I won't dwell on that. Let's align this one. Let's preview the report. See if we can get Business Central to open and grab our Amsterdam lamp again. Hit preview, and that will give us a bit more space for our description. Everything is pushed back to the bottom, and I've got my data matrix in here. And if you're curious as to what's inside your barcodes, you can open something like uh, a barcode scanner or a barcode manager for Windows. And do a scan of the barcode. And that will tell me that this barcode says 1928-S. And it is a format of a data matrix, which is exactly what I, what I was expecting. So now we know how to run and edit the simple labels. It's time to look at the more complex document labels. We can run these with some more options that give us control over how many labels we get. And to explain what I mean with all of this, uh, let's go and have a look at our data in Business Central. Let's go back to our Amsterdam lamp. And you will notice in this Amsterdam lamp, if I look at the item units of measure, that I can sell these, li these lamps uh, by piece. Stux is Dutch for piece. And I have I can sell them by the box, in which case I sell them by boxes of four. This is useful to know because in some cases we want to print the items for every lamp, uh, the item labels in some cases we want the, to print the item label per box that we are going to ship. So let's go to my sales orders. In my sales orders, of course I've prepared a new order for my Amsterdam lamp. You will notice in, in this sales order I'm selling 10 lamps and I'm selling them by the box. So if I'm selling 10 lamps in boxes of four, I'm going to end up with three boxes, two boxes of four and one box of two. This is something that I need to reflect in my labels because if I sell 10 lamps in boxes of, uh, in boxes of four, then I want, only want to print uh, I only want to print three labels. I can do that if I run my four and a half sales order label. You will notice I've got an option called one label per, which I can set per item. If I sell 10, uh, 10 items, I'm going to end up with 10 labels. I can do it by line. Uh, I've got one line, so I end up with one label. I can send it by, uh, created by unit of measure. Three boxes is three labels, or by tracking entry, uh, for instance, if I've got two separate lots, I want one label per lot. Let's use unit of measure for now. Hit preview and close. And you will notice this gives me three labels. The first label has a quantity of four. The second label has a quantity of four. And the final label, of course, uh, we're only selling 10 lamps. So the final label is going to have a quantity of two. So three boxes with 10 items in total. 
So that's one way of printing these labels. Another way is if I have, for instance, my item tracking enabled, which I do for this lamp because I've got a bunch of serial numbers here, I may want to add these serial numbers on my printout. Fortunately for us, 4NAV does this automatically. I run my 4NAV label and just print it per item and hit preview and close. 4NAV will automatically find our serial number and add the unique serial number per label. So now I've got one label per lamp and each label is going to print out the serial number that I've set up. So that's the basis. Of course, in 4NAV, it's so easy to edit our basic report. Uh, why not? Uh, and every customer has their own requirements. So let's go and edit, uh, edit the label that we were just working on. Back to Business Central. Let's copy my order number so I can use it in my preview. Go back to the 4NAV standard reports and I've said uh, earlier that in our labels, we've got the more complex document labels. Uh, we've got the labels for the sales shipment, the production, the sales order and the purchase receipt. Uh, those are the basics. You can clone them quite easily for other labels. And today, of course, I'm going to work with the sales order labels. All of these sales uh, uh, document labels work in the same way. They all have the, the repeater per uh, item or unit of measure or whatever you need. So I will open my label in the 4NAV designer. What we find here is a couple of things that are different from your standard bread and butter invoice reports, etc. First of all is that we have an arguments and data item which give uh, me, if I look at the data set, give me things like the label per, uh, or the label per simple, or the number of labels, etc. So that gives me uh, all of my request page options right here in my report. Then we've got the header and the line for the document header and the document line because I want to print the labels per item. Then I've got a special data item called label, and this data item is built on the 4NAV repeater line. And the 4NAV repeater line has the, uh, has the logic built in on how, how many repeats to create and how, how to calculate uh, the quantities based on how you want to print your report. The 4NAV repeater line is available as a temporary table, so you can add it in any 4NAV report you want. Uh, and it will automatically create your totals for you. In this report, obviously, it's built in, so I don't need to do anything with it. So let's see. In this report, again, let's play with our sizes. At the moment, this report is 1600 by 1600. Let's say I want to make it 1600, 1700 by 1200. And the first thing I need to do is switch it over to landscape mode. I can set the page width to 1700 because I want to add a barcode for my serial number. I can set the page height to 1300, which matches the labels I've got in my business. And then, of course, it's just a matter of moving some stuff around. I will remove my serial number and I will find my label data item. I will find the serial number and again press the shift key move this into my report choose barcode and give it some space and like we said earlier inside 4nav you can choose pretty much any type of barcode at the moment this is set up as a code one to eight uh, but really anything you want is there so i'm going to switch to ean one two eight and I'm going to set the show text to, to yes, because I do want a readable barcode in here. Hit preview. Let's see what this does. There we go. I've got my, uh, my label with underneath my serial number with the barcode and the text obviously you may want to make this a little bit bigger but you get the general idea
So let's recap what we just did. We've looked at and changed a simple item label. We've added a barcode and changed the barcode type and properties. Then we looked at the document label. We saw that we can choose how many repeats of the label for now for print. And finally, we changed the label dimensions and added a barcode for our serial number. Thank you very much for listening to me so far. I can see we don't have any questions. So I will wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about Fornav or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions about Fornav or about the labels, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening to me today and goodbye.